Um, I'm Amy Barron. I'm a research associate on the Methods for Change project and a lecturer in human geography at the University of Manchester. And I'm here to talk with you about photo go alongs, which I've used a lot in my research to date. So what is a photo go along? Photo go alongs are sometimes referred to as photo walks and they involve walking or moving around a place or accompanying a participant on an activity and taking photographs. The walk or journey may follow a predetermined route designed by or for the participant on which several significant places are visited. Alternatively, the photo go along may take the form of an unstructured wander around a place of significance such as a town centre. Whilst journeying through a place, participants are encouraged to photograph anything that they think significant. This could be anything as mundane as litter on the street, to renowned buildings and everything in between. Photo go-alongs are distinct from other photo-based methods such as photo voice because the researcher is with the participant as they are reflecting in space rather than just reflecting with them after they've spoken. This means the researcher can see and understand the decision making processes of the participant as they choose what to photograph um, and narrate. Photo go-alongs create detailed material which can provide really rich insight into the lives of participants, foregrounding what matters to them. They get at the messiness of life, which is often overlooked as difficult to make sense of. While participants may have selected specific places to visit, it's very likely that they'll vocalise thoughts and feelings as they move through the landscape. A fleeting smell might momentarily connect a participant with their childhood, for example. So rather than skimming across the surface of things, photo go-alongs encourage participants to reflect. What is significant? What shall I choose to photograph? Sometimes observing this decision-making process can reveal more interesting dynamics and provocations than the photographs themselves. They can be enjoyable. Often participants engage with the creative nature of the task, using it as an opportunity to reflect and learn about their lives in relation to different places, generating a wealth of material. The photographs and narrative shared can be used to creatively communicate research to different audiences, whether this be through websites, presentations, exhibits, um, or to accompany more traditional policy briefs and reports. So in my research then with older people in Greater Manchester, I used photo go-alongs for all of the above reasons. I was interested in understanding the lived experiences of older age in the move toward creating what the World Health Organization describe as age-friendly cities. In policies geared towards older people, assumptions are often made about who older people are and what is significant and important to them. In addition to foregrounding emotions, memories, hopes and fears, photo go-alongs help to reveal pinch points in relation to age and disability in feeling safe in the city on key routes, such as where being a wheelchair user, for example, might be challenging. It demonstrated the importance of creating spaces in the city that are welcoming and a space of respite. So as I alluded to earlier, the photos and narratives created by participants in this specific research were used to collaboratively assemble a photo and story collection, which was shared at different venues across Greater Manchester. The collection, called Place Belonging Manchester, opened conversations amongst policymakers, older people and academics about what older age means, and it gave something back to the communities who had spent a lot of time with. You can find out more about this collection if you're interested on the website link there on the slide. Um, and I look forward to hearing questions or thoughts you might have about go along soon. Thank you.